Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Super Mod. I am Brad Drake, and today we are going over the introduction video 8, and we've made a lot of additions to the game, including titles and wrestlers. And I wanted to go ahead and go over all of this with you and show you the fun and exciting changes we've made. Obviously, these changes are to the database, and they will be available on the Supermod version 7.0, which we're going to release in the first week of February here. So, the first thing we did was I researched a bunch of AWA former secondary titles that they had, and it turns out the AWA had a America's title, they had a Brass Knuckles title, they had a British Empire heavyweight title, they had a Midwest heavyweight title, then they had a Midwest tag team title. Now, the interesting thing was... Apparently, Vern Gagne took over a territory in Omaha, Nebraska in the 60s, and he created the Midwest Heavyweight and the Midwest Tag Team titles that were run specifically in that little territory and that town. So when the AWA would travel there, these titles would be defended. Let's take a look at the Midwest Heavyweight. Okay, here is the Midwest Heavyweight title. That's obviously not the original picture of the title. I certainly wasn't able to find one because this title went back into 1967 and I didn't find anything online. It's also a secondary title. It was only around for five years. But what I did, I, I did find some information ab uh, about it and it was pretty interested. And it will be in the game under retired. So when you launch your own save with... Supermod version 7.0, if you choose to play as the AWA, you could reactivate the title if you chose to. Let's take a look at the lineage. There's some really cool names on here that held the title. Buddy Wolf, who's currently on our roster, held the title. Jimmy Snuka previously held the title. Baron Von Rotschke, known as the Claw, held the title. Rock Rogowski, which you may or may not know is Ole Anderson, he also held the title. Bob Ellis, Cowboy Bob Ellis, that is held the title. There's a lot of interesting names in this list. Lars Anderson, who you may not be familiar with, held the title. There's some pretty interesting names on this list. Uh, Mike DiBiase, the father of Ted DiBiase, held the title. Dale Lewis held the title. Mighty Igor, Bob Orton Sr. There's some heavyweight names that held this championship. So I just wanted to give you a a shot there, and as you could see, that the Midwest Heavyweight title was created and the work that went into it to put in the lineage. Let's go over the Midwest Tag Team title next, and we'll take a look at that lineage. Now, just so you know, I am not going to be able to import these titles into the game. That is not something that you can do. So the only way I would be able to have these titles retired and then the workers have the accolades on their title history would be to start a new save, which obviously we're not going to do because we're having way too much fun with the save we already have going. So interesting names on this one include Dale Lewis again, Doug Gilbert, who is not the Doug Gilbert we think of that came around in the 80s, but the previous Doug Gilbert, Mike DiBiase and Bob Orton Sr. held this title. Reggie Parks, some of you may not be familiar with Reggie Parks. Reggie Parks was a longtime wrestler in the Midwest. He also became one of the greatest belt creators of all time. Uh, he made tons and tons of belts and designed beautiful championship belts for uh, all the major promotions out there. So Dale Lewis again held this title. Bob Geigel held the Midwest tag title. For those of you that aren't familiar, Bob Geigel ended up running Central States Wrestling. He was also the president of the NWA. Again, Ole Anderson as Rock Rogowski. He and Baron Von Rotschke held this title together. Ox Baker and Ole Anderson held the title. Again, Bob Ellis. Ellis and this name here, Johnny Valentine Jr., you may not be familiar with. Johnny Valentine Jr. was Greg Valentine. He held the belt again with Dr. Jerry Miller. Larry Hennig held the belt with Lars Anderson. It's a cool, uh, cool lineage, this title. 
Let's go back a step here and let's look at the British Empire title. The AWA had a British Empire title that was defended primarily in Canada. I think it was their way to give uh, Canada a title. Remember that uh, the AWA had quite the presence in Winnipeg for years. So this was their way to create a title for Canada. That is not the original picture of the title. I, I don't know what it looked like. I tried finding a picture of it online and I, I couldn't find anything. So I just gave it a generic look. Let's take a th look at the lineage here. Billy Red Lions held the title. Dr. X held the title. Dr. X was actually Dick Beyer, who was the destroyer. Blackjack Lanza held the title. Obviously, Billy Robinson held the title. Angelo Mosca. This is an interesting one here. Super Destroyer Mark II. That was actually Sergeant Slaughter. And then Billy Robinson was the last one to hold the title before it was deactivated. Believe it or not, the AWA had a Brass Knuckles, a hardcore title that was around for a couple of years from 79 to 81. And Don Fargo held the title and also the Crusher. And here's another interesting one called the AWA America's Championship. Not as in numerous Americas, but America owned the championship. I double-checked, and every single thing had that apostrophe on there, so that must have been what it was really called. This title apparently was created for Sergeant Slaughter in 1985 for his patriotic gimmick that he had, and I think Slaughter and Zabisco are the only ones to carry the title, and they were. So that's some interesting stuff right there. I had a lot of fun creating these titles doing the lineages, and then adding them in. But again, when you do this stuff, if you haven't done it before, it is a ton of work to research everything and to get everything dialed in. So we're going to go into our game here eventually, and we are going to, uh, obviously we can't import the titles, but we're going to uh, import the new wrestlers we've created, and we're also going to import this JCP narrative. Okay, I made a correction. Um, Jim Crockett Promotions did not have a pay-per-view deal until Starcade 87. So in my original uh, save, or the save that I've been playing, they do have a pay-per-view deal that causes us not to be able to run regular events without them running it as a pay-per-view. We've discussed this before. It's kind of a pain in the neck. I'm a little disappointed, and I hope the creators of TEW will get that fixed. I am going to lobby them to make that change, um, but essentially it's going to be up to them if they choose to do it or not. So let's take a look at the narrative that we have. Now this will be in seven uh, version 7, so those of you that play this, this will automatically be in there. So here it is, JCP PPV. So when you play this game, it'll let you know that in September, late September, that's the time that JCP should look for a pay-per-view deal. Okay, so if you're playing as JCP, that'll be a reminder for you. If you're playing as another company, you could uh, go ahead and, and play as Jim Crockett Jr. just to get a pay-per-view deal. It's up to you. It's just, again, another thing that was extremely realistic that I thought uh, would be fun and interesting for you to play. Okay, so let's log in to our save here, my save, the AWA save. And you know what? Before we go that far, I'm going to show you these wrestlers that I created. I learned about some of these legendary wrestlers um, doing this part of it that I had heard of but didn't know too much about. So I went ahead and learned about them and then added them to the game. The first wrestler uh, that we're going to add in, we're going to import later, is Dale Lewis. Dale Lewis was known as professor, prof ah, excuse me, Professor Dale Lewis, and he was a big-time Greco-Roman wrestler for the United States. United States. He appeared in the 56 and 60 Olympics. He also won the Pan American Games. Uh, Lewis eventually was trained by Danny Hodge, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time and one of the strongest human beings to ever walk the earth. And he made his debut in 1961. 
Dale Lewis worked around the country and even had some stops in Japan. He was a really, really talented wrestler. And uh, everything I read about him showed that he just was a master at tosses and just technical skill in the ring. So he stayed active in wrestling even after he retired. He he worked as an agent. He worked as behind-the-scenes type guy. So he's going to be available in the game as a road agent. And also, Dale Lewis, even though he retired in 1980, would still work the occasional match. So we put him down as an occasional wrestler. He's listed as retired. But if you talk to him, I'm sure you could bring him in to actually wrestle for you. But he'd also probably be a very capable hand to work for you as a road agent. Now, another wrestler that we brought in that I've been meaning to do for some time, and then all this just happened to remind me of it, so I brought him in, was Bob Orton Sr. Bob Orton Sr., in case you don't know, was the father of Bob Orton Jr., also known as Cowboy Bob Orton in the WWF or Ace Bob Orton in the WWF. Bob Orton Sr. was his father, and Bob Orton Sr. was a very, very good wrestler. And um, he wrestled all the way until 2000. He had his last match in 2000 at 71 years old. And from what everything I read, he was still capable in the ring all the way until he retired. There was something in the gene pool with the Ortons. And I think uh, Bob Orton Jr. is the, the same way. I think he was still in the ring just up until a couple of years ago, and he's in his early 70s. And Randy Orton is now in his 40s in the WWF and is showing zero signs of slowing down. So we added Bob Orton uh, Sr. to the game. He's still going to be an active wrestler. Uh, you can still use him. He's going to be an occasional wrestler, but you can still use him. Bob Orton Sr. was also involved in promotions as a road agent, did a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. So you'll be able to sign him as a road agent if you choose. The third wrestler that we went ahead and created and brought into the game was Cowboy Bob Ellis. Cowboy Bob Ellis was a big, rugged, nasty dude. If you think of the Chief Von Erich, Fritz Von Erich, if you think of his style with those nasty kicks and everything else he did, that was the style of Cowboy Bob Ellis. Okay? Cowboy Bob Ellis uh, was another one that retired in 1980, but he will still take an occasional match. He still wrestled occasional matches for all the way into his 60s, from what I saw. Um, he's also He also stuck around the wrestling business as a road agent and did behind-the-scenes stuff. So one thing I think I messed up when I created this was to put in the attributes that he can be brought out of retirement. And I did. I forgot to put that in his attributes. So we'll go ahead and make that adjustment right now. And I'm trying to think. Can't stay away. There it is. So he will be able to uh, be talked back in if you choose to wrestle him. Uh, if you choose to have him wrestle, Bob Ellis was was a fantastic wrestler. He was a, he was a big, powerful dude that wrestled a very physical, nasty style. So uh, even though at at this point in the game, you know he's he's in his late fifties. If you're in a bind and you need somebody, you could probably talk him out of retirement and bring him in. It's just another option. So, we are now going to import these three men into the save, okay? So, we're loading our save now. We're going to go to the editor here. I know we've done a lot of these in previous episodes, but we have new, new people watching all the time that aren't familiar. So, we'll show you how to do it. So, there's Cowboy Bob Ellis. We are going to import him into the game. We are then going to import Dale Lewis. Dale Lewis is imported into the game. And now we're going to bring in Bob Orton Sr. And Bob Orton Sr. is also imported into the game. So the only thing that's lousy with this is because we can't import the titles that we just created, it's not going to show their title history. 
And that kind of sucks. I suppose, you know, for the guys that held existing titles that we didn't create, we could go in and edit the lineages, I believe. Then again, we may not be able to. No, we cannot edit the lineages. So all of you that are playing this fresh, you'll get to go ahead and do it. I won't be able to do it in this save. So let's take a look at our guys and make sure that they made it in. There he is. There's Bob Wharton Sr. There's Dale Lewis. And there's Bob Ellis. So all three are in the game, ready to go. One last thing I wanted to show you was uh, one of our YouTube followers who's also exchanged several emails with me. He's the one that told us about uh, WFTY, uh, WDCA, and WBAL. Uh, talked about how he enjoyed watching those as a kid. And I went ahead and looked them up. And sure enough, JCP and the WWF were on those channels. So the broadcasting deals are now in here. They are now in the game. So there you go. All the syndicated shows for WWF and Jim Crocker Promotions are showing for WFTY. There you go for WDCA. And there you go for WBAL. So all those deals are going to be live when you play this game version 7.0 now. So folks, I just want to tell you that uh, this is one of the most fun things I do is to go in and do the research and the history of wrestling and learn these things and then create these wrestlers and, and do these broadcasting deals and um, create these titles and then go through and do their lineages. This is a lot of fun. And I encourage you know all of you to study the history of wrestling because there's so much to learn and there's so much that we're losing every day. And it's fun with these games to play these older mods to get to learn about the history of, of the sport that we enjoy so much. And this was a good way to do it. And again, I learned even more. One last thing I'd like to touch on is another one of our friends from YouTube emailed me and let me know about some training facilities that were messed up. And one thing I had not done since the original Gennady here was to mess with the training facilities. I left all those settings the way they were. Well, unfortunately, the New Japan Dojo was maxed out, creating way too many new wrestlers this year. It also had females. Um, New Japan was not producing female wrestlers back then. There was all male wrestlers in their dojo. So they're going to have six graduates uh, a year. That's still a little high, but then again, in the late 80s, it was pretty realistic. Uh, so we went ahead and adjusted the New Japan Dojo. We went ahead and adjusted the All Japan Dojo. You can see it right there, same thing. We adjusted the AWA Dojo, which was actually the training camp that Vern Gagne and Billy Robinson ran. We made sure that one only gives us a max of four students. And then another one I didn't think of that I better look at right now is the Windy City Training Facility. I created that one. So that's five students a year. That's pretty accurate for the Windy City Training Facility, actually. So that is that is accurate. So, okay, folks, uh, that was fun to go over. And I hope you learned something just like I learn every single time. So, you know what? We did not import our narrative. Let's make sure we do that while we have this session going on. So, again, if you are new to our YouTube channel and you're not used to seeing these, we'll show you how to do it. So, you click there where it said import, and then we go to narratives. We search for JCP, and we know it was the JCP pay-per-view one. It's imported without any problems. We go ahead and save, 
and we're good. So all the work that we did, the hours and hours worth of work, we went ahead and imported everything we could. Everything else will be wide open and available for version 7.0. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in and watching our channel. And I encourage all of you, if you want to play the 1987 Supermod, to contact me. And you can do that by going to braddrake.net slash contact. It'll shoot me an email, and I'll be more than happy to send over the links to Google Drive for you to download the game and the picture pack. Also, if you use Facebook and you're interested in talking about the Supermod on Facebook, you can do so by going to our group, which is facebook.com slash 1987 Supermod. That's facebook.com slash 1987 Supermod. Also, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We have so much more content coming and we're having a great time. I've gotten so many kind emails and uh, YouTube comments and we seem to be growing every day. We're getting more and more views and I think we have something special here, folks, and I'm glad you're with us. So again, to quote the late, great Gordon Soley, so long for now.